This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Kim McCann with me again. You are the Senior Public Health Inspector with the Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark Health Unit. Thank you very much for joining us today again. <laughs> no problem. Thanks we're, for having me. We're here to talk about ticks. Yeah. Uh, it, this, typically people think ticks are, this is the season that they come back, but they can be around all year round. Yeah, they can be. Um, typically in the winter time when we have lots of snow, they go into a dormancy. They'll hide underneath the li leaf litter, become dormant. But, you know, it, you know, we had such a mild winter mm -hmm. this this uh, past winter that when you have temperatures like that, it, it is possible for them, uh, not as um, abundant as what you would see during the warmer months. Um, so when the temperature rises above four degrees Celsius and our our leaf litter starts to warm up, then the ticks really start to become active. So it's really, really important that you know we take lots of precautions to prevent ticks from, from actually attaching to us so that we can avoid uh, getting the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Excellent, excellent. So can you give us some tips for reducing our risk of getting bitten by a tick? Yeah, for sure. So you know, wearing an insect <coughs> repellent, um, wearing long clothes. Now I know it's harder when it's, you know, when it is in the heat of the mm -hmm. summer. So maybe in the heat of the summer, you may not necessarily want to, you know, go in areas where it's uh, less manicured. Um, if you do, then make sure you wear long clothing, tuck your socks into your, into your pants just to prevent the ticks from getting on you. Um, there's also a tick repellent clothing now that you can purchase. Oh, wow. um, apparently, I've never used it, but apparently it works really well, so that's great. Um, the other thing too is, and probably the most important thing, is when you come in from outside, check yourself for ticks. So you wanna thoroughly check your body for ticks. Don't forget around your hairline. Um, you know, and sometimes our backsides are harder to see, so have someone that you trust help you out to make sure that you don't have a tick stuck in the middle of your back or something, um, especially in the heat of the summer when we do tend to wear less clothing. That's so important. Uh, you want to get those ticks off right away. The other thing is check your pets. Um, they can bring ticks inside the home. Um, so do check, check your pets, and if you're worried that your pet may have Lyme disease, do talk to your veterinarian and they also have lots of prevention strategies for pets so do talk to your uh, your veterinarian about uh, some of those strategies and I mean when you're saying check you know your hair and your back and everything mm -hmm. these things can travel too they jump or I, I well believe, they don't jump they crawl, they crawl. so okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah typically they're hanging out on the fringe so you know the fringe of the forest in long grass you know you, you may see that they're just hanging out waiting for a nice warm body to come along now in saying that you know you can still pick up ticks like I got a tick I was sitting on the ground in my front yard where there's hardly any grass <laughs> oh, <laughs> doesn't wow. grow very well and I still got a tick so anyway you know it's it's one of those things it's just they're so abundant in the area that mm -hmm. whenever you mm -hmm. come in just just do your tick check another thing to help too is take a shower because if you have a loose tick on you, okay. the water, the, the um, flushing of the water over your skin from your shower will help remove those loose ticks. And then if you have loose ticks in your clothing, if you throw your clothing into, um, into a hot dryer, it literally causes the tick to blow up mm -hmm. the heat of the dryer. So that's a really good way to uh, prevent ticks from attaching to you and getting into your home as well. It's, it's almost like the lice uh, checks and everything we <laughs> yeah. used to do. I used yeah. to be what we called a nitpicker oh. at school. I used to go in and help monthly and, and check all the children. Right. And that's what we always used to say mm. is wash and double dry. Yeah, wash exactly. Wash and double dry. So, can you tell if you've been infected? Oh, you can. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So um, Lyme disease is not a nice disease at all. No. Um, and you know, if, if you're not treated, you ca it can turn into some pretty debilitating uh, symptoms in the long run, but really um, symptoms will start to show up. So you'll have headache, um, joint and muscle pain, a bullseye rash is very common. Um, is that right away, the bullseye rash? Usually within mm -hmm. three to 10 days, you'll okay. start seeing that. It can take several weeks, um, but usually within three to 10 days, you'll start seeing all of those symptoms. Um, and it's important to know that not every person develops that rash. So if you think you've been bitten by a tick or it's possibly you've been bitten by a tick and you're developing headache, joint and muscle pain, fever, do go and see your doctor um, and start treatment right away. All right. Okay. So can you tell us more about the symptoms to watch out for 
after you've gotten the, the tick bite? Is that would be yeah? The, so the, the joint pain, the headache, the because well, some of this can be long term. Yeah, it yeah. can be. Yeah, it can it can actually mimic like an MS type of yes. Um, you know, long term. So if you're seeing those symptoms within a first you know couple of weeks of being bitten by a tick, do go and see your doctor. They can test for Lyme disease. They can start you on appropriate treatment to prevent that long-term illness. Okay, so when they test for Lyme disease, because it used to be pretty difficult to, to, try, to be able to see it in a blood work or yeah. uh, it's getting better? Uh, yeah, it yeah. is, I think. Um, the the uh, test that we use here in Ontario is a gold standard test. Oh, it's good. what's also used by the CDC in, in the United States. Um, so it is, it is accurate. The thing about Lyme disease though is, um, you do, like the symptoms really are key. If you've been bitten mm -hmm. by a tick and you're showing the symptoms of Lyme disease, that is, you know, that typically for a doctor, that's, they're gonna start treating you. It sort of sounds like flu symptoms. Kinda, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's the thing. Aside from the bullseye rash, the yes. bullseye rash is unique. Right. Um, most people will get that. So if you are seeing that bullseye rash, then go get you, checked. Go yeah. get checked, yeah. yeah. So what might we be seeing differently on your stats page with regards to Lyme? Stats. Yeah, so with Lyme disease, um, Lyme disease is a reportable disease uh, to public health. The difference between Lyme disease and other diseases is you can't transfer it from person to person. It actually is um, transmitted through the bite of an infected tick. Um, so it's not contagious. It's not contagious. So if okay. I have Lyme disease, I'm not going to pass it on to you. Okay. Most of our other reportable public health diseases of public health concern are transmissible, transmissible between person to person. Um, so viruses like, you know, the flu or COVID type, type thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of interventions in public health that we can do to help people uh, prevent transmission. With Lyme disease, that's not the case. So if, because I can't pass it on to someone, um, there's really no further information that public health can give. So the reason we were collecting ticks and Lyme disease information really was for surveillance purposes to understand if the tick is here and if the bacteria is present and it is causing Lyme disease in humans. And we know since 2006 that that is the case. Um, and we certainly, you know, we, we certainly are seeing it. If there are any changes or anything that needs to be communicated, we'll definitely, you know, send out messaging to the public. Um, but at this point, because it's just for surveillance purposes, there's, there's not, it's established right. and it's prevalent and, you know, it's, there's just not, there's not much to do anymore. So we know it's here. So when, when we talk the stats too, like if I was to find out I have Lyme disease, do I report that to you or does my no. doctor report that to yeah. you? How does that happen? Yeah. So it's actually the public health lab. So when you go to the uh, doctor and you get blood work done, um, it's the public health lab uh, that actually tests for it, and then they in turn report it okay. back to public health. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, how can we get more information about ticks and Lyme disease? We do have an insect page on our um, on our website. So, our website is healthunit.org. So, if you just type in the search bar Lyme disease or ticks, you'll you'll find lots of information. So, I, I would I guess the first ounce of prevention is make sure you check yourself and your pets when you walk in the door. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And just know that. You know, the thing, the thing about ticks and Lyme disease is that if you do have a tick on you, you can't necessarily tell whether that tick is carrying the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So just get it off as soon as you can. Um, if, if the tick is flat, chances are it's been on for less than 24 hours and then there's a much lower risk of it actually transmitting the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. If you've had a tick on you for longer than 24 hours, then do go and see your healthcare provider because there is actually an anti, a preventative um, medication antibiotic that can be given to prevent Lyme disease from um, from establishing in your body. So. And you can't always see the tick. Some of no, them are visible, some of them are not. That's such a good point. So mm -hmm. yeah, so this time of year, we do tend to see adults late in the fall, we see adults and an adult is the size of an apple seed, um, maybe a skin tag, you know, so those guys are really easy to see on our skin and we can pull them off really quickly. 
in the heat of the summer, so usually between June to the end of August, maybe into September, that's when we see the little guys, what we call nymphs. So they're the baby ticks, they're out. And they're the size of a freckle. Um, and they're really, really hard to see, but it's, you know, and, and those are the ones that we're more likely to miss. And those little guys can actually transmit the bacteria that causes Lyme disease too. Even at a young Even young at state. that yeah. baby mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. yep. So it's so important that all through the year when we come in that we do our tick, tick checks. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, it is that time of year, I guess, too, yeah. right? for sure. <laughs> and prevention is, is, uh, is key. Yeah, is exactly. Key, for sure, for sure. Yep. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, teaching us more, educating us more. We always love that here at FYI. Kim McCann, our Senior Public Health Inspector with the Leeds, Grenville and Lanark Health Unit, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome.